I am seven years old and I have two sisters who are five and nine. Other kids on our street have bicycles and we wish we had one too. Norwegian-born Torrell Cove's new film, Me and My Molten, is her third major short film collaboration with the National Film Board of Canada, following two extremely well-received prior shorts, the Oscar-nominated My Grandmother Ironed the King's Shirt and the Oscar-winning The Danish Poet. Largely fictional while drawing from real-life experiences, Cove's work is instantly identifiable for its understated visual style and charming approach to storytelling. I came here uh, to study uh, in the early 80s and then uh, I just I just stayed basically and then uh, as I became interested in animation I realized that Montreal was a pretty good place to be and uh, it's been my home ever since. Yep. I kind of happened on animation a little bit by chance I think and um, I tried it and I uh, sat in on a course at Concordia University in the animation school there and there was just something like uh, it's like suddenly all the pieces came together the great thing I think about animation and uh, maybe especially the short film which you can do with small teams or by yourself is that you're very close to what you're doing and um, something about us being controlling or not wanting to let other people do things for you, but I don't think it's that. I think it's just more about a sort of a closeness to what you're making. And uh, and I realized in animation, you know, you can write your own stories, make up your own characters, and draw them and move them. And I, I, I just found it immediately very exciting. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of, it was a bit of a eureka moment. And, and I still feel that way. <laughs> I came here originally in the early 90s. Uh, I had done a year at the uh, at the animation program at Concordia, and um, then um, somebody here was looking for an assistant, and uh, and I got that job. Uh, that was uh, an I was an assistant on a you know good old-fashioned cell paint film actually. So my job was to trace the drawings onto the cells, mm -hmm. and um, and then that job led to another job, and then. I thought, I had some ideas in the back of my head that I thought it would be fun to make film of and I, I pitched some of them and, um, and the, I think the third or fourth that I pitched I, I got, you know, um, I got some positive response from a producer who then decided that she would take it to a festival in Norway because the content of the story was quite Norwegian. In the Viking era, Norway had lots of kings most of whom died in bloody battles over borders or religion. Huh. The combination of the anecdotal and fantastical elements of the story of my grandmother Iron the King's shirts similarly found its way into Cove's follow-up short, The Danish Poet, seven years later. Why don't you go on a holiday? Get some fresh air. Where can you go on holiday if you don't have any money and you don't speak French? What about Norway? It's cheap and they're practically Danish. It's hard for me to know what people are thinking, but I think it touched a nerve somehow. I, I um, don't know which one exactly, but a lot of people have said that, that it reminds them of uh, a kind of storytelling that, that people are very familiar with and used to. I mean, and that, and that there was something so familiar in the storytelling that they actually thought you know, this was something that was rooted in Norwegian storytelling history or something like that, which it which it isn't. Well, but I don't know. I mean, it is a little sentimental. You know, it's a, it's a love story and a happy ending. And yeah, I don't know. I think it has maybe a kind of a wistfulness to it too that people find appealing. Mm -hmm. Who knows? <laughs> I'm kind of glad I don't know actually. <laughs> Ten thousand men in our town one single moustache and it has to be on my dad it makes my stomach hurt what kind of moustache a big one it's also an original story and it's a little closer to uh, not exactly a memoir it's a little closer to a true story than the two others are and because it is about something that i experienced personally when i was uh, about seven years old and it relates a lot to um, my family. 
that role in the story. The theme is this sense that I think a lot of kids have, whether it's uh, warranted or not, that uh, they feel kind of alienated from their surroundings, that there's always some reason to feel different. My parents were very um, preoccupied with not fitting in, with being different and mm -hmm. thinking of things, you know, fresh start and all that. So that's kind of the theme about feeling different and feeling a little alienated from your family because of these things and uh, about having a bit of a gap between the parents and the kids between what they really want but perhaps can't really express uh, what they really want from their parents and what the parents are very focused on giving and sometimes they're not they don't they don't really match so that's the um, and then we want a bicycle and we want just an ordinary bicycle and we get something really weird <laughs> <laughs> the idea is that it's supposed to be a bit of a period piece it's kind of 60s modern you know mid-century modern piece I think it'll fit well with the two other and two other films, and I think I think it might even work as a package, actually, you know, like a little trilogy. But, you know, when I started it, I thought, well, I draw. That's what I do, and mm -hmm. uh, so this is what I will do. And um, and then at the same time, I feel a little silly for not taking advantage of all these other ways that you can do it these days. You know, but for this particular story, I didn't really think it was necessary. I mean, I did consider briefly uh, to maybe make it a more of a collage style film, but I couldn't really make it work with the characters that I had designed and the, what I had thought for backgrounds and everything. So it's um, so I'm kind of sort of in between having this as a sort of deliberate choice and really just doing it because that's the way. It, that I do it. I would like to try something different because a lot of it really looks like fun. Mm -hmm. But I think I have to do that in the context of just trying out things and maybe not experimenting with it on a story that I have other plans for, to put it that way. Yeah.